One of the biggest challenges that we as heating engineers often encounter is the problems arising from incorrect pipe sizing. This leads on to insufficient circulation, which in turn means that our radiators won't deliver the same rated uh, heat output specified by the manufacturer. Uh, in a previous video, we looked at the equation of mass flow rate where we determined the domestic hot water flow rate in terms of its heat output in kilowatt and its differential temperature. Uh, the same mass flow rate calculation used on domestic hot water may be used on the heating too, i.e. we can determine the mass flow rate through each radiator connected to a heating circuit using exactly the same technique. Uh, the overall objective in this exercise is to ensure that we design a system where firstly we use a correct pipe size in our system and secondly that we use a pump that is able to overcome the resistance that our system presents us with. Okay, so in order to understand the concept of the exercise, we are actually going to look at a practical example. Uh, so here on this example, we have our boiler, we have three radiators, and we have a number of interconnecting pipe work. Starting with the equation of mass flow rate, which as we saw on the, uh, the last uh, screen, uh, its function is given as the uh, heat output in kilowatt divided by the specific heat capacity of water. Now this is a constant and its figure is given as 4.2. Then multiply by the differential temperature, which is the difference in temperature in between our flow and return throughout the radiator. And we are going to assume a 10 degrees uh, for our differential temperature. So starting with finding the flow rate through section 1, which is this part of the circuit. Starting with 3 kilowatts, the mass flow rate would be our 3 kilowatts. Uh, but then we have to add a 10% uh, to compensate against the uh, uh, pipe heat losses. So added to that a 10%. In other words, multiply by 1.1, divided by the specific heat capacity of water, multiply by our differential temperature, which is 10 degrees. So if we work that out, we can see that the mass flow rate uh, through uh, our section 1 uh, becomes equal to 0 0.08 kilograms per second. Now, we can actually write that in terms of litres per second uh, due to the fact that uh, one litre of water actually weighs one kilogram. Therefore, we can actually put that to be as litres per second. So, now that we have the flow rate through section one, we can use the pressure loss chart to determine the pressure loss uh, per meter runoff pipe. Uh, in order to do that, we need to select the appropriate pipe size that meets the uh, correct design criteria, i.e. to select the pipe size that will allow a water velocity of no more than one meters per second for standard small bore pipe work and one and a half meters per second for micro bore pipe work. Uh, let's take a uh, 15 mil internal diameter pipe uh, for our section one and see what our pressure loss would be in terms of our calculated flow rate of 0 0.08 kilograms per second. It turns out that the corresponding loss uh, using a 15 mil uh, copper pipe, which is that column right there, uh, with a flow rate uh, of 0 0.08 litres per second, so the flow rate being right there, uh, 
uh, having complied with the water velocity of less than uh, one meters per second uh, is in actual fact 0 0.03 meters head. So let's just jot down those parameters uh, once and for all uh, for that section one of our heating system. So we selected 15 mil pipe. And that was the, the size uh, of the pipe which we chose. We then worked out our uh, flow rate uh, for the section, which turned out to be 0 0.08 liters per second. Uh, we then worked out the pressure loss um, for that particular flow rate of 0 0.03 meters head. And of course, that was to meet the design criteria of uh, water velocity to be less than one meters per second. So it follows that we have 0 0.03 meters head of pressure loss. Uh, now then, for section one, we have 12 meters uh, of, uh, of pipe run, uh, but that doesn't include any uh, pressure loss due to any fittings. Uh, the standards call to, to add a further 33% for uh, a run that has uh, an average number of fittings included or add a 50% uh, extra for a run that has uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, fittings included. So in this case adding a further 33% gives us a uh, effective pipe length of uh, 16 meters. Having worked out our effective pipe length and also having worked out our uh, meter head loss, the uh, loss through that section of pipe, which is section one, is now the product of uh, the uh, uh, effective pipe length by uh, the loss. Therefore, uh, the loss through that section equals 0 0.03 multiply by 16. And this figure equals 0 0.48 meters head. Inserting the result in a table, this would be the final product as to what the table would look like. Uh, so quickly running through that section one as a recap, notice that sections two and four are worked out in exactly the same way. Section three and five, however, are slightly different due to them being the interconnecting part work only. So starting with this column, I'm just going to run through that uh, first line, uh, column by column, and you should be able to uh, relate to them as we go along. Uh, yep, starting with the first column, this identifies the uh, rated heat output of the radiator. Uh, the next column then identifies the 10% heat loss due to the uh, uh, main pipes. Uh, the column after is uh, the combined figure for the heat loss. Uh, next column then identifies our calculated flow rate, then our purposely selected pipe diameter, followed by uh, the next column which identifies the corresponding pressure loss per meter run of pipe, then the actual pipe uh, length itself, added to it a further 33%, uh, due to uh, fittings and then giving us an effective pipe length identified uh, in this column. 
Finally, the branch head loss, which is the product of the effective pipe length and the pressure per uh, the pressure loss, I beg your pardon, per meter on of pipe. As have been mentioned before, the maths to work out uh, section one, section two, and section four uh, are identical. However, working out the maths through section three and section five uh, may not uh, appear as transparent as the uh, uh, other three sections. Looking at section three, we can see that this section feeds both section two and section one. Therefore, we can actually determine the flow rate through section three to be equal to the addition of flow rate through section two and section one, i.e. the flow rate through section three uh, equals 0 0.08 plus 0 0.055 and this becomes equal to 0 0.135 kilograms per second. Equally, section 5 feeds the flow through section 1 section 2 and section 4. Therefore, we can say that the flow through section 5 equals uh, 0 0.08 plus 0 0.055, uh, which as we've seen above is 0 0.135. And then a further uh, flow of 0 0.065 which is the flow uh, through this channel here and this becomes equal to 0 0.2 kilograms per second now Placing these flow rate figures both in the table, we can work out the remaining columns as we did for section 1, 2 and 4. Having worked out our appropriate pipe uh, diameter, we now need to uh, decide on an appropriate pump that would meet our requirement. In deciding on a pump, uh, it is important to consider a couple of points. Firstly, depending on the internal construction and design of the boiler itself, uh, there could potentially be some uh, high resistance uh, to flow uh, represented by the boiler itself. Therefore, the boiler resistance has to be taken into account as an addition to the resistance represented by our heating circuit. The second point that must be considered is that our pump needs to overcome the most resistive path in our heating circuit known as the index circuit. So the next process uh, identifies which is the index circuit in our heating system. Okay, now looking at the circuit again, we can actually see that uh, there are three possible circuits that uh, uh, exist within this system. Uh, the first one is going to be the uh, section 5-4. The next uh, circuit can actually be considered as to be section 5-3 and 2, which is that path. And uh, finally, the uh, last section on this circuit could actually be considered to be as section 531, which is that branch of the circuit. On uh, top of the screen, I have actually written the uh, pressure loss figure 
through each branch. Uh, now you could see that the uh, biggest pressure loss uh, is in actual fact uh, through section 531, uh, which equates to 1.2 meters head. Therefore, the biggest resistive path in this circuit, in, in, in this system, is going to be section 531, and therefore that circuit is going to be our index circuit. Uh, so if the head loss through the boiler itself, uh, i.e. the uh, resistance to uh, uh, pressure within the boiler design itself is 2 meters head, um, and the pipe loss uh, through the index circuit uh, is 1.2 meters head, then uh, the pump that we, we decide on uh, should be sized that uh, the combined figure of the two, i.e. 3.2 meters head, uh, delivering a flow rate of uh, 0 0.2 kilograms per second, which is the flow rate through the index circuit uh, as well. So to wrap it all up, we can see that the pump needs to be capable of delivering 0 0.2 kilograms per second of flow uh, at 3.2 meters head. Uh, given the characteristics of uh, this particular pump, uh, we can see that the speed setting 2 on this pump uh, would actually allow the system water to be delivered to all radiators efficiently given that we observe uh, all those uh, design criteria that we have mentioned throughout this video. Uh, I hope that this video has been of some help to you and until the next video, uh, thank you very much for uh, watching.